I V M. If you like listening to the podcast, check out Made in India with me, the best Indian indie music podcast in the country. Check it out on ivmpodcasts dot com. You're listening to the podcast presented by the Daily Pal. This is Pranuti and Amit. And we're from the Daily Pow, a city-specific food and culture platform, and this is our weekly podcast, the Powcast. Now, today we're going to do an episode of the Scene, in which we talk about culture in the city, and we're going to be discussing um, the ongoing show at the Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Vastu Sangrahale, also formerly known as the Prince of Wales Museum. It's called India and the World: A History in Nine Stories. So, stay tuned for the Scene. Shunya one, shunya one, shunya one, shunya one. A billion-dollar acquisition. Another copycat startup got formed. No, the tech world in India is surely moving double the speed of this voiceover. Tune in to Shunya One every Tuesday to catch us talking to the smartest people we know on the IBM Podcast website, app, or wherever you get your podcasts from. The scene. Now today on the scene, we're going to be talking about an ongoing exhibition at the Prince of Wales Museum, and I think we're just going to say Prince of Wales Museum because the full form is way too long. C S M B S or C S M B S, yeah. It's so the show is called India and the World: A History in Nine Stories, and we've been hearing about the show all year. It's the biggest show to take place at the museum this year. Uh, it opened on the 11th of November, and it will go on till February the 18th. Now this show is really about the history of civilization and it's been told through around 230 objects that have been sourced from uh museums across India and the British Museum in England. So here's how it's organized. It's organized according to nine principles and um well nine sort of subsections which they have called shared beginnings, first cities, empires, state and faith, picturing the divine, Indian Ocean traders, court cultures quest for freedom and time unbound so we thought we sort of take you through these different sections and tell you what they're about and also our picks of uh, you know this massive exhibition like we said over 200 objects and so really i mean for you to sort of go through all of them it's going to take you a few hours so what i did basically was i did the audio tour which is about 24 highlights but pron you sort of went and did it sort of on your own and you actually saw some things that i missed i guess because yeah. you know they really had to pick and choose when it came to the audio tour. Yeah. So I mean this show it marks 70 years of independence. I mean that's why they're doing this mm-hmm. show. And um as you said it starts with shared beginnings and uh, shared beginnings is essentially goes back goes 1. back to the history yeah, million years ago of the uh, sort of basically the beginning of humankind. Yeah. yeah. And so the exhibits in this section are um you know tools that human yeah. beings fashioned back then back then and sort of talks about a little bit how basically all of uh, humanity uh, originated in africa yeah and, and then, then sort, sort of, of branched out across uh, the world uh, in particular uh, yeah. in particular asia and, and europe uh, and europe and um so in this section you have a series of hand axes and uh, these are sort of basic tools used to you know say skin skin animals yeah um and, and do all kinds of very sort of you know basic things and they were basically the first tool the hand right, axe exa- which exactly. is fashion from stone what's interesting is that they're all the shape is similar you know yeah. they're all flint shaped yeah. essentially you know in, like a pear drop mm-hmm. and what's interesting to see is how people in different parts of the world and you have hand axes from india from europe so, from the middle east yeah. how they all figure the same thing out that this was this was uh, you know the most logical shape yeah. i think also there is the implication that they traveled you know the uh, technology as it was the, yeah. the hand axes i mean travel from one place to the other and yeah. they they've got like hand axes that are believed to be like 1.7 million years old in this and they just suppose like one of the first things that you see is this two uh, hand axes which are similarly shaped one is from tanzania and the other one was found in chennai like present day chennai you know of course thousands of years old but uh, yeah so i mean basically the idea of this exhibition is basically to show you compare things that are 
Indian with things from across the world and see the commonalities between the two and so they do this throughout like so the idea of getting things from the British Museum and their expansive collection and uh, you know artifacts from museums yeah, across really India is to show how ideas and inventions traveled yeah and then the next section is cities, cities it's yeah, cities which talks about the you know earliest form of urbanization and you know when you talk about that you can't not talk about the indus valley civilization and if anybody who's ever studied indian history will be very pleased to find the statue of the dancing girl here which you all we've all seen in our textbooks and read yeah, about and now to actually dance- see it it's quite amazing yeah the dancing girl from mohenjo daro i mean like i remember the picture very clearly yeah. in my history textbook and when you look at pictures you get the impression that the statue is actually much bigger than yeah, it actually is and this is. one's really tiny it's the size of a toothpick or something like that no i mean it's bigger than a toothpick for sure but when you see it um you kind of really you do get the shock of pleasure yeah. because She's you're so seeing small. something that's very familiar to yeah. you that you've seen yeah. Yeah. as a child and here you're seeing the actual yeah. thing and the thing that they talk about is you know she's called the dancing girl but like nobody really knows her profession yeah and uh, you know because she's not exactly dancing she's not that, dancing she's just standing stance, with yeah, her with hand on her hip and right next to her is a sculpture of a woman from Mesopotamia and again you know the idea is to compare women across cultures you know cultures that existed um, mm-hmm. at the same time there is another you but know, I just in, want to say one more thing about this lady she has a monobrow and one of the things that they talk about how that was a sign of great beauty in those times in those ancient times yeah well kajol should have been uh, <laughs> in born back then and in what am if she was in iraq she would be a superstar <laughs> exactly but you know in that section there is also limestone head of a man who looks very similar to the harappan priest mm-hmm. who we're also very familiar with you know like along with the dancing girl we've all seen pictures yeah. of that priest but he looks similar but it's it's not the same it's not the same guy um also in this section one of the things that i really liked seeing was this egyptian soul house mm-hmm. now if you've seen if you've been to any major museum in the world um uh, you would have you know the, that has a substantial you know egyptian collection mm-hmm. you would have seen um exhibits related to egyptian funerary rites mm-hmm. you know while sort of burying bodies they buried all kinds of things that yeah. that you know the soul could carry into the next life so this soul house is a clear model of a house of an egyptian Mm-hmm. house and so you have a house you have a courtyard you have food and meat in the courtyard and the idea is that you know this person will be well fed in the next life so that was see now that know, was not in the audio tour and i want to go back and see what it looks like but uh, yeah moving on to the next we have the empire section and in that they have actually something that was found very close to where we live in bombay in what we know as nala supara or just supara and it's an ashokan edict i believe it's a part of the ashokan edict and it talks about you know uh, basically peace uh, yeah and it's really nice because it talks a little bit about the futility of rituals and more about how you should be kind to your fellow man you know? right right and uh, i mean this ashokan edict it's part of the collection it's of the it's part of the museum. regular collection so, so you I mean, can see it even otherwise after also this yeah. exhibition but what i really liked are these three heads of emperor so you have a head of a kushan king you have um a head sculpture in the style of alexander and you have sort of this bronze head of hadrian mm-hmm. and you know when i read hadrian i immediately thought of game of thrones and i think every game of thrones fan Not who has me. read uh, <laughs> got trivia will think of the wall in the tv show because the wall uh, beyond which there are wildlings and white walkers mm-hmm. is model after hadrian's wall and hadrian's wall was like the northernmost point of the roman empire okay so that was fun to see yeah mm-hmm. yeah the next section is state and faith and it talks about how these empires use religion as sort of uh, you know uh, almost like a propaganda tool in a That's sense That's right. So for example, a lot of monarchs used coins mm-hmm. to spread faith. So you know, you have these gold coins of uh, the Persian king Shapur yeah. and you have you have say the head of the king mm-hmm. and you also have fire as yeah. Zoroastrians worship fire and so, so it was two so one side had the face of the emperor and the other side had right. the right so the, the idea image is, of fire. the idea is to suggest that uh, the king is god's representative on divi- earth yeah so that's ex- and the thing is like again we mentioned that they're trying to make these 
kind of connections and how these commonalities and so right next to this sasanian coin is a coin from the gupta empire which was almost exactly the same thing where you you have the image of the king and you have i think an image of lakshmi on the other side trying to show you that look there's a clear connection between like these are the chosen you know right people to rule over you right and yeah i mean so sort of this is really interesting and like similarly they've got like this uh, uh, this sculpture of a sitting ganesh you know statue where he's seated and how it's from indonesia and how they you know it's different from it looks quite different from the standard representation that we you know we we've come to know mm-hmm. i mean it's common across right. uh, india for instance okay and then in picturing the divine which is the next section you have you have a lot of sculptures of you know gods and deities and the one that caught my eye was a very uh, you know primitive looking sculpture in wood of um, a taino god and this was from jamaica it's like a 15th century sculpture and what is striking about this sculpture is that uh the the god seems to be crying you know there are tears streaming down his uh, face and the inscription reads that um, you know priests would um, attempt to you know get into a, a state of trance mm-hmm. in order to reach the divine mm-hmm. so this god is shown to be in a trance like state okay. and it's it's you know sculpturally seemed quite unique and quite different from the other sculptures mm-hmm. over there so indian ocean traders which is the next section uh, really talks about you know trade across the indian ocean trade between uh various civilizations and cultures that took place across the Indian Ocean um one of the first exhibits in this mm-hmm. section is a roman pepper pot that was found in britain yeah and this pepper pot shows hercules grappling with antaeus and the bottom of this object has a chamber for pepper yeah. and pepper as we all know was grown in india and was considered a big luxury it was considered a huge luxury and uh, i mean you know the spice trade the spice yeah. trade which uh, between uh, south india between the malabar coast and across the world is is quite famous yeah and in the same display is a statue of poseidon which was found i mean it's from 1 ad apparently it was found in maharashtra somewhere and it says it was probably some seafarer stash that was discovered years and years later and so you know i think again the idea is to show that these both are figures from greek mythology but were found in completely different places um but the exhibit that i really liked is a uh, rhinoceros after duro and it's an um, engraving from 1548 found mm. in italy so it's actually a copy of the engraving made by the german artist called duro and according to the aud- i mean the information that i heard over the audio guide it said that basically that uh, he had never actually seen a rhino but at that time uh, exotic animals were considered a great gift between you know different uh, rulers and you know sort of traders and so this was actually given as a gift from the the rhino a rhino was actually given as a gift from the sultan of gujarat to the portuguese who wanted to send up a trading uh station of the west coast of uh, of india and uh, so this rhino actually traveled from gujarat to uh, or you know uh, traveled over sea to europe and uh, that's how basically rhinos came to reach that continent they were they had seen rhinos at least exactly and this this rhino was then later sent to the pope yeah. but it perished on the way a gift from the portuguese to the pope yeah yeah so it's interesting because you know there's also a very uh, there's a play that has a very similar story to this right yeah so in uh, you know adyam which is a theater initiative conducted by the aditya birla group um the third season concluded you know just recently and one of the plays um of this season is a play called gajab kahani which traces the journey of an elephant mm-hmm. from india to portugal mm-hmm. so i mean again it's, it's a very of, similar story it is a except similar that it's an elephant instead of a rhinoceros and the, and the elephant survives the journey okay. it gets to portugal and it, it just shows that how you know at the time people were still discovering the world mm-hmm. you know and uh, you know people hadn't seen exotic animals like rhinos and elephants mm-hmm. and um, it was just very common for monarchs to gift each other exotic creatures yeah then we come to court cultures court cultures which is a really interesting section again and uh, just the first things in this section struck me um, there are two 
two sort of pictures from the Babar Nama, mm-hmm. which is a 16th century, um, you know, text folio. And the first one shows uh, Babar feasting in Kohat. And this was Babar's first incursion into the continent. Now, Babar left his home in Central Asia and traveled to the subcontinent to set up an empire. So yeah. he was the first Mughal ruler. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's just always a joy to look at, uh, you know, Persian art because it's just so beautiful and so finely detailed. And the other um, illustration is of Barbar hunting a rhino, mm-hmm. which is probably something he hadn't seen either before he arrived on the subcontinent near Peshawar. Yeah. Um, there's also this beautiful, beautiful copy of a Ming scroll mm-hmm. showing occupations of court ladies. And uh, again, this is like a, it's just, it's a long scroll and it shows, you know, Chinese women doing courtly things like, doing up their hair or okay. watching parrots or <laughs> playing mahjong you know things like that and and one of the last set of exhibits in this section is a set of astronomical instruments from various mm-hmm. courts you know for example there's this lovely celestial sphere from a mughal court from mm-hmm. the 17th century which is quite quite nice yeah yeah and then next we come to sort of very recent history in quest for freedom which talks about you know countries that have recently gained independence like over the last century and the first thing that we see there actually is this very sort of interesting statue of queen victoria from nigeria and it is a wooden statue and it actually sort of looks I mean, they, they, it's a sculpture where she looks like an African queen. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it's difficult to say whether this was intentionally subversive or not, but it definitely seems subversive because, I mean, it looks like you, it has a likeness of Queen Victoria, but she looks like an African yeah. woman. Well, I think it's made in the traditional Af- African style. Yeah, the, the Yoruba the, style. Yeah, and uh, which they talk about uh, where, you know, the statues all have feet. Now, the thing is, so they even made, uh, even sculpted her feet, but apparently nobody had seen her feet before. Because, because never Queen been, Victoria has never photographed yeah, showing her feet. Exactly. But the sad part is that even in the sculpture, the feet, the, even though they've sculpted the feet, they're concealed by her gown. So you exactly, can't really you see Exactly, you can't it. see them. There are also a couple of um, great sepia-tinted photos by Felice Beato, the famous photographer who shot a lot of images, you know, during colonial times. Um, And these are photos of the aftermath of the 1857 mutiny. Um, There's also a certificate from the Slave Registry Office from South Africa in 1828, and in in this certificate is of this one particular slave. It gives his name, his mother's name, mm-hmm. and the woman who bought him. Oh, okay. Yeah, so quite an interesting uh, document. Yeah. And, you know, this section also has a, some modern and contemporary art, Indian art. It's got, for instance, you know, painting of Amrita Shergil of, uh, you know, it's called Two Girls. And it's also got a video work by the Rux Media Collective. But I think, again, for people who are sort of remembering their school days, the most interesting thing to see here might be this facsimile of the preamble page of the Constitution, the Indian Constitution. And it's actually, it looks amazing because it's like got these, the borders or the margins have like got these detailed illustrations. Yeah, I actually, when I when I saw that, I was a little moved, you know, because it talks about uh, justice and yeah, equality. Yeah, and secular and how and all these things that we're not really seem, we don't really seem to be living that just 70 years down the line. Yeah, you know, you know so I mean, you know, the last well, a couple of years, I think these uh, values have been flouted more than ever. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it was kind of moving to see that. Yeah. And then the last section is something called Time Unbound. And this talks about how some cultures like time isn't considered linear and especially in like Aboriginal culture, for instance. And this is actually a really small section. And I kind and of feel that it was, odd. it's slightly odd and it was almost it was kind of like just tagged on to make it nine stories. I don't know why. But uh, so it's a really small section. And the sort of highlight of this is this massive sculpture by Ellen Talur. And it's depicting, you know, Shiva. Actually, this sculpture represents Shiva and the idea of destruction and rebirth. And what's remarkable about it is that it's this huge sort of orb, uh, this ball of concrete and coins. And the idea is to basically say, I think that today, in today's day and age, concrete and money are almost like a form of destruction because that's what's happening around us, you know. Uh, And I mean, 
this sculpture apparently was is so heavy it weighs apparently 850 kilos and they couldn't it's on loan from the kiran nadar museum of art in delhi and it actually had to be lifted to the second floor by crane because it could have been just too heavy to take through the museum so i think they had to sort of make a hole through one of the windows or something like that and just bring it by crane crane so incredible uh yeah. this there are the, the other couple of things in the section are just a couple of aboriginal paintings and again they're very nicely detailed and colorful and they, and tell they the story sort of, of depict um, dream time yeah which, which is, is an is, aboriginal concept <laughs> which is an aboriginal idea and the idea is to show that while the exhibits in the show have been arranged chronologically uh, not every culture uh, views time as chronological as linear yeah i mean that's the idea of this mm-hmm. of this exhibit Yeah. So there's a lot to take in. I mean, I mean you can spend an entire day in the museum just look just uh, you know viewing this particular exhibition it's spread across two floors across multiple halls. Uh but it's very sort of lucidly done. I would say it, it's actually worth doing the audio tour it's only 50 bucks but also take time to check out the other stuff as well because like we mentioned you might miss some of the really interesting you know exhibits as well. So that's it for this episode and we'll be back next week. For updates on city events, you can check out our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages. We're the Daily Pow on all three. You can listen to the podcast on the IVM website, the IVM app, or your favorite podcasting platform. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. Sorry to say, but there's been a slight delay due to the apocalypse having suddenly begun. As you can see, there's death, destruction, and chaos taking place all around us. But don't you worry, food and drinks will be served shortly, and I would recommend checking out IVM Podcasts to get some of your favorite Indian podcasts. We'll keep you going till this whole thing blows over. Thank you.